Hey everyone, welcome back to this series on Firebase security rules for Cloud Firestore. My name is Doug, and in the last two videos, I talked about matching documents with both regular and glob wildcards in order to write expressions that allow access to those documents. So far, I've only talked about generalized read and write access to matched documents, like you see in the rules here. This is good for many apps, but you should know there are more granular rules than just read and write, and sometimes it's important to distinguish between them in order to properly control access to suit the needs of your app. So let's go over that. In a previous video, you saw rules that look like this, that allow read access to everyone to all documents in a collection called users. This rule also limits the write access to only authenticated users whose UID matches the document's ID. So if the user's UID matches the document ID, they can do whatever they want with this document. But do you really want to let your users do anything with this document? If you fully trust them, sure, but there's always a chance some malicious user might try to cause problems for your app by making changes that break the assumptions of your app. On top of that, you might even have a bug in your code that does something dangerous that you aren't anticipating. Yes, unfortunately, bugs in your app can unexpectedly destroy or mangle data, so you might want to defend against that using security rules. For the purpose of data security, it's a good idea to assume that malicious or buggy code might make changes that you don't want. So you should be very specific about operations on your database that are allowed. Just like in the previous videos, let's say I have a collection called users, and it contains documents for each authenticated user in my app. I'd like users to be able to update the contents of this document. That's OK. But what I really don't want them to do is create or delete that document. That's something I want to do on my own only when the user account is created or deleted. And I'll manage that on a back end implemented with a Cloud Functions trigger. For example, imagine that documents in this collection contain a timestamp field that records when the user last launched my app, like so. If I want to use this field in a query to find all users who have launched my app since a certain point in time, a missing last launch field might make this query inaccurate. So I clearly don't want to allow this to happen, neither intentionally nor by accident. OK, let's go back to those security rules for the users collection. With the right access allowed in this rule, the user is allowed to create, update, and delete the document. And as I said, that's more control than I want to allow. Fortunately, write access can be broken down into those three more granular types of access. It looks like this. You can see here that create, update, and delete access can be called out individually in security rules. Write access is the same as the combination of create, update, delete. And for my case, full write access isn't what I want to allow. So if you want the user to be able to modify their document, but not create or delete it, you should modify your rules to look like this. Create and delete permission are no longer allowed here, since the default behavior is to reject any type of access not specifically allowed. So if the user tries to delete the document, the Cloud Firestore SDK will generate a permission error, and the operation will fail on the client. You will need to determine for yourself which documents the user should be able to create, update, and delete in your app. The requirements will vary with each use case and implementation. So what I'm doing here isn't necessarily the best for your app. You have to think it through for each of your use cases. Oh, one more thing before moving on. I mentioned before that I want to use Cloud Functions to automatically create and delete the user document. This is OK, because the Firebase Admin SDK and other Cloud Firestore server SDKs always bypass security rules. So even if you deny access to the client, your server code will always have access. So keep that in mind when designing your security rules. OK, so we've seen that write permission breaks down into the more granular create, update, and delete permissions. You should know that read permission also breaks down into the more granular get and list permissions. In the same way that write permission implies create, update, and delete, read permission implies get and list. This breakdown for reads is a bit different than for writes. Here's how it works. With git access, a client is able to request a single matching document using the git operation on a document reference when using the client SDK. However, with only git permission, clients can't perform queries on the collection. You can see here that a query for all documents in the user's collection using the collection reference is going to fail with these rules in place. Now, if list permission is allowed, a client is able to query and filter the documents matched by the rule. Denying git access also prevents clients from individually fetching a document by its ID. Now, you might be wondering, why would you allow individual document gets but deny queries? 
In the case of this users collection, maybe you don't want users to be able to discover some other user's data simply by performing a query. And that's a very reasonable thing to deny. Also, you might not want to allow someone to pull down the entire contents of a very large collection in one query, which could be costly. For these cases, disallowing list access might be the best thing to do. But if you do want to allow queries, but only certain kinds of queries, security rules can help you out. You've already seen with security rules, there is a special global object called request that gives you some information about the incoming request that's being checked by security rules. We've used that to access the authenticated user ID. Another request property is called query, which is an object that contains some information about the query currently being performed against a collection. It doesn't apply to document gets, only queries. And here's how you can use it. Let's say you have a very large collection called posts, and you want to restrict the number of documents that a client can request from it for a single query. You can modify your rules to enforce that. If a client app requests all the documents in the collection, the query in the rule that allows it might look something like this. Now, instead of allowing the query to read an unlimited number of documents in one shot, which could be expensive for you and time consuming for the user, you might want to deny queries like this and only allow a maximum of 20 documents per query. To implement that, you would change the rule to look like this. Notice that the rule is using request.query.limit to check the document limit coming from the client and deny the request if that limit is greater than 20 or no limit is specified at all. To get this query to work again, all we have to do is add a valid limit. Any value between 1 and 20 is allowed by the rule. And with this change to the query in place, it will be allowed. There's one important thing to point out here. This rule for limit doesn't actually stop malicious code from pulling down the entire contents of the collection. Clients can still use the Firestore API to paginate through the results, fetching 20 documents per page until the entire collection is read. But this rule will at least stop you from paying for an unexpected mistake with limit in your own code. It's possible with security rules to control the document fields on which ordering is allowed. You can do this by using the order by property on the request.query object. So if you only want to allow user documents to be sorted by that last launch timestamp we saw before in chronological order, you can change the rule like this. Notice that order by is an object with key value pairs. The keys are the names of the fields used for ordering, and the values are the direction of the sort. Ask, A-S-C, denotes ascending order, the default smallest to largest and desk is for a descending sort in the opposite direction. To make this query work again, I'll add an order by clause on the last launch field as required by the rule, and we're good again. If you're thinking of using a list rule to disallow certain documents from a query, I'll repeat what I've said before in this series. Security rules are not filters. You can't check the contents of each document in a query result set to determine if it should be given to the client. That unfortunately doesn't scale. But you can do that with a get method rule for an individual document. I'll say more about this in a future video in this series, so stay tuned for that. OK, we've seen in this video that read and write access in security rules both break down into more granular types of access, which you can use as you see fit. It's definitely worthwhile to think about this level of control so that users are required to interact with collections and documents in exactly the way you expect. As usual, be sure to click the links in the description below to read more about security rules and subscribe right here to the Firebase channel on YouTube to find out when that next video in this series is ready. In that video, I'll talk about the various data types you have available in security rules and a few ways to make use of them. And I'll see you next time.